Okay. Hi, Akshay. Thank you so much for helping my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Akshay Sankara. I'm a student at TAMS, UNT, and I'm really interested in computer science, specifically machine learning. And that's really it, yeah. Uh, what got you interested in machine learning? Uh, I was always sort of interested in computer science because my brother studied computer science a lot, but then I was sort of looking at the different fields and and machine learning really caught my eye. Uh, were there other things that you considered? Uh, like, um, did you have second and third interest that machine learning trumped or was it just always machine learning? I mean, in the beginning, it was actually space exploration. Just, I was really obsessed with watching videos uh, on YouTube, just about black holes, wormholes, things that I couldn't really even comprehend. See, th that was like my first obsession. And then slowly I got into computer science, web development and mobile development, but then I stuck to machine learning because I found it most interesting at that point. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seems very transformative. I, I guess you've played with Chat GPT. Yeah, I have. <laughs> have you used the Chat GPT four or uh or three point five or what? No, not yet. I well sorry, I used Chat GPT three, but I haven't used GPT four or anything. But yeah, it seems great. Uh it's it's really good. It's using the transformer architecture, and I, yeah, I'm really interested in that stuff. Yeah, uh, what are some things that you've done with ChatGPT just to, uh, kind of see what you thought of it? I mean, it's helped me just learning about computer science and machine learning. If I have like a bug, if I need some help actually understanding a piece of code, I code, I just go to it and ask, "What does this really mean?" It's just really helpful basically that's awesome i mean it's like the perfect tutor um yeah. you know it's available 24 7 always patient can really exactly. explain itself yeah <laughs> it's uh it is pretty awesome i've i've been um using it too i i've um used it to write like uh poems to put into like graduation cards you know yeah. so kind of, type out all the key points that I want to make. And then it's like, <laughs> can you turn this into a poem? And, you know, yeah. just... it's great. Yeah, it's scary. And we're going to be talking, <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking to people and they won't be people. Yeah. They'll be like bots that people wrote in chat. GPT. It's really, yeah, it's crazy what it can do. Oh, well, um, I wanted to ask you some questions about the moon. I guess, first of all, did you know that NASA's planning to send astronauts back to the moon? Yeah, I've heard about that a lot. Uh, would it surprise you that most people haven't? It would, yeah, it would surprise me, actually, yeah. So you think um, your your friends and peers and classmates would probably know or not know? They'd probably know because we, well, yeah, they probably know. I'm assuming they would. But that's that's awesome. Well, what do you think about it? I think it's great. I think it's like, it's like the stepping stone basically for, you know, establishing other colonies and achieving all our different goals. So yeah, I think it's a foundation that we kind of have to lay before we look at all these other things, travel to all these other planets. Yeah. And when you think about the future of humanity, uh, say like 200 years out, what does it look like to you? Uh, in 200 years, hopefully we accomplish like uh, traveling to different planets in our solar system because our technology is probably advanced enough by that point where we could go to Mars or tra have, a, have established a sustainable colony in the moon. Yeah something like that where we can actually just feasibly travel across planets that's what i hope so at least um so you think in 200 years we might have people living on the moon mars and uh, the moons of jupiter saturn that that type of thing hopefully yeah it would be really cool and it would definitely interest everyone and all the kids would love that basically if you could take a trip today to space, uh, would you? Uh, yeah, for sure. That would be an opportunity that I'd have to seize. 
like uh if you had an option of going just on like one of these suborbital flights or spending a few days in orbit or or going to the moon or immigrating yeah. to mars like which one would you choose uh if there's no like risks involved then i'd love to go to mars i think the weather there and everything probably suit me extremely cold yeah and you know uh, not much uh atmospheric pressure either so yeah well that's awesome well thank you so much for your time did you have any questions for me or anything else you want to say before i stop the recording uh not really no um actually yeah i did have a question i've looked at your linkedin and stuff what do you what's your role at nasa and what do you really enjoy doing just a question no absolutely uh so i'm a um I, I'm a trainee in the um, CI4 branch, which is responsible for the uh, operating the electrical, thermal, and mechanical systems on spacecraft that carry NASA astronauts. So this includes like the International Space Station, uh, the Boeing Starliner, uh, the um, uh, Orion um, capsule, and uh, the Lunar Gateway, as well as the human landing system. So we we interact with all five of those programs. I'm specifically in the International Space Station program. Uh, so what I've been doing over the past uh, year and a half or so is learning all about the electrical systems, the external thermal control systems, and the mechanical systems on the outside of the space station that moves like the solar arrays and the, uh, the radiators. Mm -hmm. And my role will be to work in uh, mission control, initially in a back room, um, supporting the, the front room person that you see in the, the, you know, the pictures of mission control, and yeah, yeah. be responsible for reacting to any type of failures or off nominal conditions, as well as supporting uh, planned events such as um, spacecraft visiting the, the space station. We have to take um, actions to make sure that the thrusters used to maneuver the space station or the uh, visiting vehicle don't actually uh, cause damage on the solar arrays. So we have to put them in a good position, but that often means that you're putting them in a bad position for uh, power generation, which then yeah. means you need to go and manage your power. Um, so that's, that's uh, what I'll be doing. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> and uh, right now, I've I finished all the uh, classroom work, and now we're doing a kind of more practical things. We have these sims mm -hmm. set up where we have, um, uh, you know, <laughs> excuse me, we have uh, flight control rooms uh, where we have other trainees who are also learning, um, controlling a software version of the space station. And then we have instructors in a different room making stuff break. And then uh, they're listening and watching how we deal with it. And then they, oh. they tell us, uh, you know, how we need to improve. And so much of it is actually communication because I'm supposed to be an expert in the electrical system, but there's another person that's an uh, expert in sort of uh, the, the, the attitude control systems. And there's another person that's an expert in like the communications and command systems. And there's another person that's an expert in like the internal life support systems. And so like these four core disciplines all have to be able, all depend and interact with each other. And they sort of speak their own language, but then we all have to boil that up into language that the flight director who's like overseeing everything can control yeah. and understand. And, um, you know, be able to make trade-offs about, you know, <clears throat> doing this versus doing that. And yeah, it's been, it's been really neat. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I am okay. really glad I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah well awesome um yeah and if you ever come down to houston i mean dallas is only like four or five hours away yeah I'd be happy to give you a tour so, that's really cool yeah i might take you up on that offer <laughs> well awesome well i'll go ahead and stop recording then okay